What's up everyone, it's Farhan. Welcome to another video. DJI released a major update for the Mavic 3 and it has a whole new set of features that we were all expecting to be released in January 2022. Let's take a look at the new updates. Added focus track, master shots and time lapse. Added raw only photo format. Reduced video recording noise for ProRes of Mavic 3 Cine. Reduced occasional vibration of aircraft arms in some scenarios. Improved return to home performance. Improved obstacle avoidance performance. Improved hover stability. Fixed issue some computers could not connect to aircraft via USB. Fixed issue of normal color appeared in some scenarios. Fix some bugs for remote controller. In this video, I did test out most of these features such as hyperlapses, master shots, and focus track, but I'm gonna make a different video in which I test out these features in detail, so stay tuned for those. Let's start with Active Track 5.0, and for some reason, I forgot to screen record my phone, but I did manage to record the actual video of me being tracked. Now, here's something that's new that I didn't expect. Just like the Skydio has this feature of where you can place the drone around you in a circle, front, back, left, right, or even in between those. It was only on the Skydio, but on the Air 2 and Air 2S, there was two tracking features. One was Active Track and the other one was the Active Trace Track and the other one was Parallel Tracking where the drone would be on your side, but it wouldn't be on your side exactly, it would be at a slant. But here you can change at any time you want. I started off by putting the drone on my right side at first and I was walking, it was tracking me fine. Everything was okay. Then I suddenly wanted to change the direction of the drone so I put it in front of me. Sorry, I put it on my left side first and then I was walking as well. It was tracking me and everything was fine. It was doing really well. I was filming at 4K 30 frames per second. Now you gotta keep in mind that there's no D-Log yet, but I'm sure they'll release another firmware update where you can record, you can active track and it can record in D-Log. Now I changed it and put it in front of me and it went exactly in that direction and it was doing well. I then decided to try out the obstacle avoidance while being tracked so i saw this tree and i decided to walk right underneath it and see what the drone does my finger was on the stake just in case i had to push it back or put it up but the drone was still tracking me and then it moved around the tree and it was still tracking me and keeping me in the center and i was moving backward and it was still tracking me and the drone stopped moving back because it could sense the tree right behind it i decided to do this one more time by putting the drone behind me and having it track me and it's still tracking me when it comes in between, when it comes to the tree, but it moves around it completely, no problem at all, and it's still tracking me completely fine. Master Shots works just like with the Air 2S. You have a couple of features where, a couple of options you can choose from, where you can choose the width, you can have it in small, medium, or high, and you can change the time as well. Now, with the Air 2S, we had an issue where the gimbal would turn when the drone was moving straight in order to use the sensors. But if it if you turn that option off, it would move sideways and the Air 2S didn't have sensors sideways. But with this drone, you have no issues because it has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. So no issues over there. The only thing obviously I didn't like with this is that it does not record in D-Log only in normal color profile and in 4K and I'm guessing 30 frames per second. You can, however, adjust the exposure value, but I tried to lock it, but it didn't happen. It wasn't being able to lock. Now, you can always transfer it to your device and then use any one of the DJI templates available to edit your master shots, but it still works with 1080p and not in 4K. However, the main footage that was recorded does record in 4K. The tracking features work pretty much the same as it did with the Air 2S and the Air 2. You just draw a box around your subject and you have three options that appear, which is spotlight, active track, and point of interest. Now, even in points of interest, it records in normal color profile. 
you have manual options where you can choose uh, your shutter speed aperture and ISO but it only records in 4k and in normal now active track features can record into record a maximum of 60 frames per second which is actually very cool because you can get some slow-mo footage while being tracked but I hope they do release a later update where you can record um, making you can have active track and it records you in D log it worked completely fine and the footage turned out amazing in point of interest you can adjust the speeds to from slow to medium to fast and it does just fine one of my favorite features that i love using on a drone is hyperlapse and hyperlapse was also released on the dji mavic 3 and it has the same options like we did with the previous drones such as the air 2s and air 2 and you can adjust your exposure value by sh setting your shutter speed, ISO, and controlling your aperture. And you have four options of course lock, free, circle, and waypoint hyperlapses. But for this video, I just used a course lock for five seconds. And you have the option of filming it, of shooting your hyperlapse in raw jpeg and or you can just turn it off and have the drone just create a hyperlapse for you now, i don't recommend that i recommend you shoot your hyperlapse photos in raw edit them and then create a hyperlapse it turns out much much better but so far no problems at all it did perfectly fine and it created a very nice hyperlapse straight out of the drone now, something we've always wondered and always wished we had when taking photos is that we wish we could have just shot photos in raw format only instead of jpeg plus raw and now dji has released an update where you can choose to shoot photos in raw only jpeg only or both jpeg and raw which is excellent and you can set it only for raw instead of having two sets of the same photos in different formats which is excellent so that was it me testing out the new features on the DJI Mavic 3 using just one battery in the part nearby and uh, having a quick browse through of the new features and see how they're doing and I'm so surprised and I'm extremely happy that these features are finally out but I know for a fact that they're probably going to release an update or a few more updates and have these features improve. Now of course we do not have quick shots yet and panel photos yet but I'm sure that update will be out soon too. The only thing I hope, I really hope, is that we do get the option of recording in D-Log while using Active Track. That is something that's uh, very important to me and I'm sure to many others who have bought the DJI Mavic 3. I'll be working on each of these features, the review on each of these features in a detailed video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those videos. Thank you guys for watching do hit the like button if you find any value in this video and subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly videos i'll see you guys in the next one take care